speaker, uh, all the participants, thank you so much for uh, doing your part. And it's not about us really, everything is about you. This morning I would like to introduce you a physician, a family doctor, doctor uh, Missy Gutierrez Hermano. She happens to be my wife's niece. She and her husband both are medical doctors. And uh, I asked her several weeks ago, and Pastor Dennis and Sarah, apparently he forgot to include the program, but she's scheduled to give us some health nuggets to talk before the message. You know, uh, we are talking about something about prophecy today. Uh, Dr. Mitzi Gutierrez is going to give us some help tonight. So with that, Dr. Gutierrez. Good morning, George. Happy Sabbath. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. So as Pastor Roy was saying, um, I want to share with you uh, some questions that we frequently hear in the beginning, our patients, they always ask, uh, basically because we have um, this COVID-19 uh, pandemic going on and we are just adjusting, right, to deal with this virus. So one of the common questions that we always have is the patients come and say, uh, I'm having a close contact with someone that, that has COVID-19. So, what should I do? So, first of all, we have to define what a close contact means, right? And um, close contact is if you have been within six feet, more than 50 minutes with someone who has an infection. So, if that is the case, right, uh, what the CDC advises and recommends is that like we have been quarantined for 14 days. Uh, why? Because the virus had to start developing, you can start developing the symptoms between 5 to 14 days. So that is important that you be quarantined, that means in your own bedroom, your own bathroom, if it is possible. Right? So then the other question will be okay, uh, what are the exceptions for that? So there are two exceptions. If you've been fully vaccinated, or if you have a COVID test um, positive in the last 90 days, that means that the immunity is still protecting you. So if that is the case, you don't need to be in quarantine, but you will need to choose a patient for 14 days when you are in indoor public places. And the recommendation is just monitor your symptoms, be tested in five to seven days. So, but if you develop symptoms, then you will have to be tested right away and be in isolation, right? So, but what happens if you say now, okay, so now I'm positive for COVID test, what I should do? So that's the pen of your risk factors, and risk factors means comorbidities, and like the ideas, kind of pressures, indices that you may have, and your age, right? Um, what symptoms do you have? So if you are lucky that you don't have any symptoms at all, they only recommend you to be in isolation for 10 days since the day that you were tested for COVID-19. Uh, but if you start having symptoms, then you have to communicate with your primary physician, depending on your comorbidities and what symptoms you have. Also, you may need to go to the urgent care emergency department, depending on what symptoms you have, especially if you have short spread. Um, what is important is always you monitor your symptoms, have a piece of paper, write it down your temperature and what symptoms you are having in getting better or worse. So that's one of the things that uh, I want to show, share with you. But I would like to emphasize in prevention because that's a key. So we don't want to get in those kind of situations and start asking what to do or what to do. But prevent is key. So the CDC recommends the vaccination like to prevent to have a severe disease. It doesn't mean that it will protect you 100%, but at least it will prevent to have a severe disease 
or stay in the hospital, go to the hospital. Right? So then we have the general recommendation that you will know that we should do a mask, right? If you are indoor, public places, try to keep your distance, six feet apart, cover your cough, don't wash your face, wash your hands, use the gel. So all those things are very important. Like to also keep a social distance, right? So and I know that we have recently Thanksgiving, now we are having Christmas and here, so we have to try to be careful on those things. Um, what else we can do, right? So one of the things that is very important is our immune system. And the question will be how can we strengthen our immune system? Right? So we know that eating healthy whole foods is very important in our diet. We have to include some vitamin antioxidants that you probably already know, like vitamin A, and you can find in the squash, the carrots, the green leaves, the vitamin C, the oranges, right? Uh, the red pepper, and also we get the vitamin E, right? In the nuts, the seeds, sunflowers, and all of that. Vitamin E is also very important, but unfortunately we cannot find it in the proper amounts in our meals. So we get the vitamin E from the sun. So that also is a risk for getting skin cancer. So it's very uh, frequently that we recommend that check your vitamin D levels. So your doctor can give you the amount that your body needs. Um, other thing that is very important is the sink that you can find in the beans, in the lentils, okay, the seeds. Uh, all those uh, can uh, give you the proper uh, nutrients that everybody needs, right? Besides that, that it will empower your immune system, it will strengthen your immune system. What else would I recommend? So, unfortunately, in the last couple of years, we have seen like that. Uh, Many of our patients, now they have more anxiety problems, more depression, more sleep problems, and also they have more stress disorders, right? Many things are going on on the outside, so those kind of problems weaken the debilitate your immune system. So we recommend them that they can do exercise, especially outdoors, at least three or four times a day. Why? Because when you do exercise, you are not only straining your muscles and your tendons, but also uh, the oxygen will help you uh, for a proper oxygenation in all your body. And also, when you are exercising, uh, there is a neurotransmitter in your brain called serotonin that it will be released. That will help you with the depression and the anxiety. So exercise is key. And especially if you do it not only once a week, but three, four times a week, at least 20 minutes. And usually also when I have this kind of patients, I always ask. So what about your faith? Do you believe in God? So some of them will say, yes, I believe in God. I said, okay. So then grab your Bible and start reading the Bible and strengthen your faith because that's also what it gives you peace, right? If you trust in God, it doesn't matter what's going on outside, what happened in this world, because your life is in God's hands and He's under control. So I just want to share with you uh, in 1 Peter 5-7, that verse, um, I don't know if someone can read that verse, and it says, um, Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. So don't forget about this. We are in God's hands.
during World War II, Lieutenant Kino Oroda of the Imperial Japanese Army was assigned with his spiritual operations team to take care of an island of the Philippine Archipelago. And his uh, commanding officer told him, Lieutenant, you are a trustworthy man, but you have to secure this place for a special reason. The Empire will appreciate it. So Lieutenant Hero said, Yes, sir. You know, the military, how they move. And, uh, and so with that, he went on this, but before leaving, the commander said, Lieutenant, remember one thing. Under any circumstances, unless you hear directly from me, from my enemies, you shall never surrender. Is that clear? Lieutenant Hero said, Yes, sir. Well, after receiving the order of no surrender, he went with his team and he found the island that actually it was already occupied by a house. So they turned into a guerrilla warfare. In this island there in the archipelago, started analyzing the uh, landing uh, runaway, uh, the equipment, the storage, etc. And then suddenly the war after the US got to nuclear powers in Japan, August 6, 1945, August 8, 1945, and Nagasaki, then you know Japan is already. But they didn't know. They didn't know. They thought the war continues on. One day you know, we saw the secretary of Canada. I found this pamphlet on the floor. One of the airplanes dropped it. And it says that the war has ended. Now we can go home. And
spiritual things. But the child that is coming is referring to Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, you know, the dragon was trying to devour him. As soon as he was born, remember here? And they decreed to give all the babies. Well, they had to escape from Bethlehem. They went to Egypt. Now, in Genesis 3, verse 15, here's the first messianic prophecy. Oh, it went too fast. <laughs> And when they went wrong, knocked on the door, 